So let's, you know, let's discuss something that a lot of people would ask us. Um, how to build an unshakable confidence in yourself without coming across as arrogant. And we, we slightly touched that before, but I wanna, I wanna go deep into it. Um, a lot of people would say, you know, I don't wanna come across as arrogant. I wanna, I wanna be confident, because if you're not confident, dental school would not pick you as a, as a future dental student. Um, how, like, how do you reconcile between being confident but not coming across as arrogant? I think the most important balance is something we've already talked about twice, is a lot of us have accomplished a lot of things, which is why we are at this stage where we're applying to dental school. Mm -hmm. You can talk about your accomplishments or you can talk about your accomplishments in light of the hardships that you've faced. So I could choose to focus on the fact that, oh, I was in this vaginalis program or, oh, you know, I had all these points or, um, you know, dental school was just, I had this 4-0 first two years, like I didn't. And, and you'll just, find that many students in the interview, they would say that, oh, I had a 4.0 straight throughout my school. I'm like, okay, so what? Right? Exactly. Yeah. So you could talk about that, but if you want to just drop it into what you're talking about, you could talk about, it was really difficult for me to maintain a high GPA, and this is what I started doing differently, which helped me get to a 4.0 from a 3.8. Or, oh... You know, I have a 26 on the DAT instead of just saying, yeah, you know, I aced the DAT. I, I did really well on the DAT. You could talk about, I didn't have the best GPA. They already know that. So you can acknowledge these things and own it. I didn't have the best GPA, which is why it was so important for me to do well on the DAT. And I really learned these things about myself as I was studying for the DAT. Um, so as long as you acknowledge the journey and the struggle that came before the accomplishment, it, it, mo it makes the accomplishment more modest or it, like... It humbles the accomplishment. The accomplishment is not, it's, there's no, nothing less to it. A 4.0 yeah. is still a 4.0. Um, a great prestigious program, a great prestigious program. Points in clinic are points in clinic. But the way you talk about them, humble the entire thing. So you come off as a little more humble. You want to come off as confident and humble. Unaccomplished people are not humble. Humility is a factor of the successful. It's hard to be humble when you have nothing or you've accomplished nothing. You're not being humble. You're just being um, shady or you're trying to avoid talking about things. But being humble is a skill that you pick up over time. And that's something I think is very important. So talk about your accomplishments. Talk about your struggles. But do it in a humble way. So you, in a way that other people can relate to. Right. Like, oh, don't worry. I used to be like you too. But then I did these things differently and I saw results. Exactly. And you know, the funny thing is, uh, we, we feel that a lot of the successful people are arrogant, but they're not. They're very really humble. Um, in one of the books that I read, Good to Great, it's uh, one of the best business books out there. Um, Jim Collins, uh, he researched 500 Fortune, Fortune uh, 500 to like, you know, Fortune 500 CEOs. And he found that the two most important characteristics they had was they're really thoughtful and they're really hum like humble. Like they're basically the top of their company, the top of the game, but they're still humble about it. And humble people are liked more um, in the job field, in the, in the you know, school, even in dental school. They're, people don't like arrogant people in general. That's true. But I will put a caveat here. So you said you want to still be confident. So when it comes time to your work, that is not the time to be humble. So if you know you do good, a good job, if you know you're like a good dentist or you're very good with your hands, Talk about it, but don't talk about it as if I'm really good with my hands. You can talk about it like, I enjoy working with my hands. I built really great things, and I love looking at that stuff. So that way you're talking about pursuing a passion, overcoming. So you have to, you basically have to soften the blow in some way. Like you either talk about your interest and passions, or you talk about how hard it was to get to where you are, and like the things you've learned along the way, and how it wasn't always that easy, and right. how... A lot of it was luck also, but also talk about, but I know my work is good. And because of all these things, hardships and this passion and interest I had in this thing, now I'm good. And I think that's helped me a lot. Every time I talk about this stuff, like fortunately I have accomplished a lot of things, but I always talk about now I'm at this stage. I wasn't always there. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. And I think that is the difference between confidence and uh, arrogance. Awesome, awesome.